So here we go with the DIY Tesla Powerwall. So far, this is what I have. There's seven packs. All seven packs are wired in series. The seven packs that are wired in series, each individual pack is wired in parallel. Each one of these power packs has 80 cells in it. Try to get a better viewing of it here. 80 cells times 7 packs is 56, add your 0, 560 cells. This power wall, or DIY power wall we just turned on, is a 5 kilowatt system. It's run from this sine wave inverter, which is a 3000 watt 24 volt inverter, pure sine wave. There's a small solar array that charges it. And the solar array is through this charge controller. And it's only two 100 watt panels. So I just got this up and running. It's running the man cave, the room that we're in. And this orange wire, you can see here on the top, goes all the way up to this electrical panel, feeds the electricity or the power to this man cave, and the yellow cable you can see coming here comes from the power house. This cable is going to the charger on this inverter charger, and when it needs to, it'll charge this battery bank. So you really don't even need solar panels, but I had two solar panels that I put on it to 100 waters and you can see I am bringing in 3.2 amps and it's 25.2 volts for the battery bank setting. This is an MPPT charge controller. It's made by Make Blue, Make Sky Blue It's made by Make Sky Blue as an MPPT-60 charge controller. It's about a quarter of the price of what you're going to pay for a normal charge controller. However, it works amazingly, and it's a quarter of the price. As well as this 24-volt uh, inverter, it's about a, well, around a quarter of the price. And it, too, is uh, made in China. And it's uh, an amazing inverter. works well. 3,000 watt regulated, 9,000 watt surged. So, this is what we have as the initial 5 kilowatt DIY power wall. If you look up here, there's two more packs. they got to be soldered together. There's another pack here, and another pack here, and a few more batteries are on the way. Hope this helps. The pack in the back is cells that couldn't be used that were below 1500 milliamp hour. That's going into the uh, trolling motor for the boat, and they're anywhere from 900 amp hour to 14 to 1500 amp hour cells and they are uh, not strong enough to work in the power wall but they because of the price of them have to be used somewhere and this isn't my testing what I come up with so there's two more of them packs here one's there and one's there and they run the trolling motor really well I'm getting about uh, two and a half hours out of each pack and they're weightless pretty much not weightless but they're a lot lighter than a flooded lead acid battery However, comparative, they would give similar results at a reduced weight and easier to carry around, if you will. So, back to the power wall. This has no BMS on it, no battery management system. And if you look, you can see each one of these packs has a voltmeter on it for my analog testing it's not a BMS again battery management system it's just simply a BMS so that I can voltage watch these uh, battery packs to make sure they don't go out of uh, sync well you can see they're between 3.6 roughly and well 3.8 for the other end if I can focus in on that here so they're within 0.2 of a volt I don't believe I'll need a BMS, not to rule it out, but if I ever did, I can hook it up at a later date. Next move, guys, hope this helps, is the other seven packs to go across the top, making it a 10 kilowatt system. There will be seven more packs go down this side, 
making it uh, a 15 kilowatt system and seven more packs to go across the bottom here for a total of 28 packs making it a 20 kilowatt hour battery bank hope this helps guys uh, a lot of the help came from YouTube and uh, this design came from Elon Musk the DIY power wall this technology all of it is based off of the fastest car in the world, lithium-ion cells used, approximately 6,000 cells in it. And in my testing, if it can make the car the fastest car in the world, I need to replace my existing battery bank. I may as well replace it with a battery bank that's going to be maintenance-free. Of course, you manu manually have to watch them all, but why not have one that's maintenance-free? And, well, if it's going to last a lot longer, that's the way or the road I'm going to take. With this, I have axial fuses. They're one amp fuses. And I'll show you how I build these packs, if you will, or you're interested in seeing. Maybe for future development, if it can help you out, by all means. These are what they look like. And there's 80 cells again in this. And this pack is built in parallel. All the positives are up. Every single one of them are positive up in this 80 pack. Negatives down. That's parallel. When you come to the packs, positive pack, they're now wired in series. This positive lag from this side goes to the negative lag of this side and so on. All the way down, it's positive to negative, positive to negative. This is the negative end here. It goes down underneath and it goes to this bus bar over the top and it goes to the negative side. This side goes down through this DC disconnect. Should there be issues, it'll break. And it goes to this positive side. Each and every one of these has been circuit breaker, or if you will, DC disconnected, however you want to put it, as well as the inverter has got a DC disconnect in it, which goes uh, to the positive lag on that. On the charge controller, they're just a, a 30 amp line that has just a regular uh, fuse in it that was, uh, I believe this one's a 40 amp, and it should be a 30, but it's uh, close enough. This one is a 20 amp, and it goes from the solar panels to the bus bars, and this uh, this one goes to the solar panels, rather, and this one goes to from the charge controller to the bus bars. So everything's been DC disconnected. I did with a, what I could with what I had. These are MC4 connectors. They're 30 amp connectors, and there's two on each uh, terminal of the positive and two on each terminal of the negative. Not that I'm going to pull 60 amps out of it, but I wanted to make sure I had a good connection. The bus bars that are made after it's all soldered and all the fuse links are on the positive side, so each individual cell, should there be any issues, each cell can decommission itself, taking itself out of service, and run a normal operation. But if that happens, I'm not sure how I'm going to know, but in my tests, as I only just turned it on, this is working incredibly well. It runs this man cave. No issues. I can't wait to get these two packs and these two packs soldered up, and the remaining three to go across the top for another seven, totaling 14 packs, and connect them to the bus bar. At that point, where these are small wires, I don't want to put a big load on it, but it's running the lights in here. It's running uh, the pellet stove in the man cave for heat, as it was one of the dilemmas I might have been up against with building this pack. I didn't want to make this pack so that the enemy of it, where I live in a harsh climate, is cold. So I have an off-grid powerhouse, and by taking this man cave off that, man, that powerhouse, it makes this uh, load for the man cave non-parasitic and puts it on its own power system, making that work would reduce uh, the draw that I already have on the battery bank in the main powerhouse where the house is already connected to it. So that's the goal. And eventually, if I can get 20 packs in here, or 28 packs in here, and make a 20 kilowatt power wall, I will then hook up the, a drop a line from this panel into the powerhouse and be able to switch over a breaker at the powerhouse, uh, taking the main property right off of the uh, power system that it's uh, acquired that it's on now and then switch it over to this power system but it's not big enough yet but in my testing this is what I've found so far uh, this technology it does work and it works well a lot of work goes into it these are laptop battery cells taken apart 
They're all tested, individual batteries, and the best of them is put into this DIY power wall. Now my build is 1500 milliamp hour cells and higher. If they're 1500 milliamp and higher, they go into these packs. They become the DIY power wall. If they're not 1500 amp or higher, they go into this boat packs, which is this. And these are wired a little bit different. They're wired in 20 packs, one, two, three, four, five, they're positives up. And then one, two, three, four, five, they're positives down, and so on. These one, two, three, four, five are positives up, and these are negatives up and positives down. So these two are an 80-pack cell, but they go into the trolling boat motor, and they're the degenerated cells I can't use in the power wall. But I can use them somewhere else. With the price of them, well, I don't want to pay a lot for, obviously, used laptop cells, but it's what I got to work with, and in my testing, this is what I come up with. Now, a lot of guys are building their packs this way with all positives up. I just found that the travel through them may make more heat as well as a harder time to balance them. So my design is it's 8 one way by 10 the other. 8 10s are 80 cells. With that said, it's all positives up, and that's what I've come up with. Now, there's no BMS in it, no battery management system. There is a future opportunity to add that if you need it. But I don't feel the need be is there to add it. But at 3.8 for the end pack, 3.6, 3.5, 3.7, 3.7, 3.7, and 3.6. I'm within 5 to 8 is 0.3 of a volt. Yeah, it's not balanced, bang, perfect, right on. But I don't see the need for that where it's so close. In this testing, I won't be able to answer that question until we add, let's say, another seven packs up above, when I take them trolling battery motor packs out of there, which work fabulous, by the way, and I will do another video on that, and uh, I'm getting three hours at each one of these packs on a trolling motor, and them are de de degenerated cells. So considering that, uh, we'll do another video on that if you're interested for the trolling motor, but fabulous, uh, fabulous uh, thought, whoever, well, Elon Musk come up with this design if it's the fastest car in the world not only is it the fastest car in the world but it's probably something that is going to change the way technology works and for those on board hope this helps uh, until the next video we'll have seven more packs going across the top seven going down the side seven going across the bottom totaling eight 28 of these packs at a 20 kilowatt power wall DIY and Hopefully, this helps those that uh, are doing the same thing. Till next time, YouTubers, that's all I got.